Hello and welcome to oh oh Starting off the news this week, an analysis of deep ice cores published in the journal Nature Communications has resulted in the conclusion that there was an enormous solar storm that hit Earth nearly 10,000 years ago. Given how vulnerable our technological world is to solar storms nowadays, research into them is both very important and quite common. This research looked for high levels of specific carbon, beryllium and chlorine isotopes in ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica. These particular isotopes can form when large amounts of energetic particles released from the sun during solar storms react with the Earth's atmosphere. The researchers found extremely high levels of the beryllium and chlorine isotopes they were looking for in some of these ice cores, most likely produced by an extreme solar storm that hit Earth around 9,200 years ago. The study also provides evidence to suggest that this actually happened near a period called a solar minimum, a period of least activity from the sun. It is widely believed that there would be devastating consequences if such a storm were to hit the planet today, and that there aren't enough safeguards in place to protect against such an event. In other news, a new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has taken a deep look into global tree diversity and estimated an amount of tree species likely currently extant on Earth. They have concluded that there are 73,274 tree species around today, with nearly 10,000 of these currently undiscovered. The team behind this paper hopes that this research can be of great use to future studies which have previously had to rely on a published list of species descriptions that the paper says are geographically uneven in coverage and, of course, incomplete. An example of this uneven distribution of discovered trees is South America, where the team believes around 40% of the undiscovered tree species to be. And now over to Ben, live from Singapore. Thanks, Doug. Also in this week's news is the report of another reptile found preserved in early Cretaceous amber. This time it's a lizard, a new genus and species called Retinosaurus camtiensis. This animal is found to be a member of Skinkoidea, and so is related to living lizards such as skinks, with the head, forelimbs and most of its body being preserved in the amber, even including its integument. This individual was not fully grown when it became trapped and died, however leading the researchers to suggest caution about accepting the evolutionary placement as final, since its young age may have influenced its classification. It's also important to note that this specimen does come from the Cretaceous amber deposits of Myanmar, the collection of which is a highly complex and controversial issue which I covered in a video a few years ago. But the paper states that the specimen came from a non-conflict zone in the country and from a mine owned by a company that is not involved in the Myanmar conflict with the detailed report on the ethical acquisition of the specimen included in the study. So, a fascinating new discovery that reveals a lot of detail into the life appearance of this lizard lineage in the Cretaceous. And finally for this week is a very interesting study on mammal evolution. This study ran a huge phylogenetic analysis of over 6,000 anatomical features from six previously untested fossil mammals, and added them into the largest matrix that currently exists for mammal evolution, along with data from 27 nuclear genes. So, basically, quite a bit of data. The result of running this analysis was that a new grouping of mammals was identified that is actually the sister group to the placentals, the infraclass that we belong to ourselves, along with most other living mammals. This new grouping, named Tamiotheria, actually originated in the Cretaceous and then survived the extinction that wiped out the non-bird dinosaurs, surviving into the Paleogene when they coexisted with the placentals that began to radiate at this time. But not only that, a species of mammal that lived in the Cretaceous, Delta Theridium from Mongolia, was found to actually be a member of the marsupials, meaning that the age of this group has been extended back quite a while, to before the end Cretaceous extinction. The paper is really interesting and has therefore made some pretty incredible finds considering the early evolution of the placentals and marsupial mammals. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week. Also, don't forget to